Hey, how's it going? I'm Alejandro, the CGI nerd, here with another Python tutorial inside of Maya. Today we're going to be talking about creating functions that we can use to run separate actions and things like that. Um, it's just going to be a really kind of basic introduction to what functions are. So let's take a look at how we would start something like this. So uh, what are functions? Functions are a way to encapsulate bits of code so that we can call them again later with one line, things that we can reuse over again. Um, also, it allows us to e more easily access, um, what's it called? Um, more easily be able to collaborate people because people can work on individual functions and modules and things like that and then you can actually um, hand that off to somebody else to use in their code so let's look at functions um to define a function we are going to be doing def um, and that starts the definition of the function and we're going to do a simple uh, hello world function to start off with and then we'll build up on top of that and see what else we can do. So I'm going to call this hello world and once we give the name of the function we have to open and close parentheses because there might be arguments in this case there's no arguments right now but we can do that and then we go to the next line. Next line is everything that is being held in by the uh, function, what we want to actually run. So uh, this is just going to be a simple one line command function. We're going to say print hello world. There you go. So when we run this right now, we can see that it doesn't actually print the command yet. So let's um, clear the history really quick here. Edit, clear history, there we go. So when we run this, it just reads the commands, but it hasn't actually ran the print statement yet that says, hello world. So how do we get to do that? This is just the declaration right now. It is the blueprint. So we actually need to do something with this blueprint that we have created. In order to do that, we call the function, which we called hello world, and then open close parentheses. We don't have any arguments right now, so we don't have to put anything in there. And we run this, and now that we run that, we can see that it actually prints out that hello world statement. So let's get a little bit more functionality out of this. We can start working with um, with some arguments, and we'll look at how we would, could, would do that. So let's define another function. And this one is going to be called um print statement i mean this is a redundant function but it's just for an example and then um statement will be the variable name and then we put a colon at the end so we have a function called print statement with the variable in the argument called a statement. And something to note with these is that they're local. So we'll do some examples with that. It's a local variable rather than a global variables that we've been using so far. So we can do something like print statement. And then now when we are running the function, we would run print statement. And then we need to put an argument inside of here because we're telling it that we need something to run this. Because if we try to run this right now, it's going to give us an error. That error that is telling us that it takes exactly one argument and zero are given. So 
we need to make sure that we do have that argument that we can actually use within our function. So let's create a variable. This is um, my string, and we're going to make it equal to hello world. So we'll call this my string. And now if we run this function, you can see that it actually prints the hello world. That's because it is this um, string right here. So if we were to change this to um, spam and run this, you'll see that it prints stem. So it does everything inside of this function um, based off of what is uh, given as its argument. So everything that is done here, we can run it multiple times. So let's say we had, we actually don't exactly need that. We can actually put a string here. So we can say something like spam. And then let's run this function one more time. Copy that and put it down here. But this time we can run eggs. So we can see using the same function, we were able to get two different results out of that same function. So let's do a, something a little bit more um, functional. Let's say we had a variable that is equal to true. And then we can define a function. And let's call this switch bool. Uh, be careful with your names because I added a space here for a moment. And um, that will not work. You need to make sure that it is all one line together like that. You can get confused. And then let's call this argument bool. And then inside of here, we can do a if statement. So we can say if bar is equal to true. So we're checking, or actually, this is wrong because I'm calling this variable. What I want to do is call the argument. So I'm going to change this. So if bool is equal to true, bool equals false. Else, bool equals, oops, and this is a comparison. I do not want to do a comparison. Hi, happy trail hiking. How are you doing this morning? Trying to get a quick tutorial done. Uh, I got a few minutes. I want to try to finish this before Michael's stream, so maybe we can feed people over that way. Um, just a technical tutorial on how to do functions inside of Python uh, within Maya. Uh, so if it's not true, we want to change it to false, and then any other condition, we're going to want to change it to true. And then let's do a print, and we'll put the argument as var so that we can check whatever the variable is. So we'll run this here, and we can see that we have this function that's supposed to switch things, but when we try to print, oops, we haven't even run it, so let's run the function. But right now when we print var, it just shows up as true. So let's run this function. It is going to be switch bool, and the argument that we're going to use is var. 
Uh, I misspelt that, so we have to be careful with the spelling. Programming, it's always very picky, making sure that you are consistent with everything that you're using. Okay, so we have the variable var that is true. We ran that function using the variable var, but when we print this var variable, you'll see that it is still true. So it actually did switch it, but it only switched it here locally inside of the function. It never actually outputs anything different inside of the global variable. If we wanted to do that, we actually need to do some sort of return statement. So let's do that. So here we've gone through the process of switching the variable. Now let's return that variable so that we can use it. We go return bool. And let's structure this a little bit better. There we go. Run this. And now we're returning the variable and it's still true. Why is this the case? Because the, returning the variable is basically making a, um, a value here that we can use, but we're not using it in any way. We have to reassign it so we can do something like var is equal to this function, which lets us switch the Boolean value. So let's try that now. And we can see that it runs it as false. If we change this to false, and we run it again, now it changes it to true. So that allows us to be able to have a little um, extra functionality with this by adding the return value to be able to change actual global variables rather than keeping them all local. So let's look at a quick um, function that we can do uh, using Maya commands so that we can see something in the actual 3D viewport. So let's import maya.cmds as mc. And then I'm also going to import random so that we can create a random number. Uh, I'm going to do random dot seed to randomize the uh, seed of the number so that way it's a little bit more random than normal. And then I'm going to create a variable. So let's create the variable here, or let's say rand bar. And that is equal to uh, rand range, and I'll set a range from 1 to 10. Let's make sure that this is working. Uh, let's see if it's a lowercase r. Random range. Oh, I remember what we did wrong. We need to call the uh, module. So random dot rand range. Random range without an uppercase. Sorry, guys. I'm getting close. There we go. So we create a random variable that is between 1 and 10. And then now let's do a function, uh, create geo, and we need a variable, and we can do something like if the variable is greater than 5, we can create a sphere. And else, 
we will create a cube. So let's run this. And the it ran and it stored it into memory, but we actually didn't run this function. We only defined it like we spoke earlier. So let's run the function at the bottom. Create geo. And the argument is going to be our random variable. Rand var. Let's do this. And this time it created a sphere. Let's clear that out and let's run it again. This time it created a cube. So we're generating a random number and based off of that random number, it will create a different shape. It's got the cube a few times. Cube again. <laughs> It's probably going to do cubes more often than not. Let me just keep on running it, run on top of each other. There we go. Now we finally got another sphere. But that is how you use functions inside of Maya. I hope you find this helpful. We'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys are here in the stream and you want to check out another cool streamer, check out uh, Michael Fire Jr. He has a cool stream that is coming up right now at 10 a.m. See you guys later. Bye.